Hello and welcome to another Blender tutorial. In this tutorial, we are looking at how to work with the Particle Info node in the Blender 2.63.117 or the higher. Since it's a new node introduced in this Blender, we will be looking at the basic working of this and how it will affect the particle systems in Blender. So let's get started. Before actually working with the Particle Info node, you may want to go to the uh, code.blender.org and just search for the particle info node where the the Lucas, the developer, has put some interesting tests and the node setups and you can see this video has done some pretty cool steps and you may go to the other steps so let's actually work with the particle info node now so I'm there in the new scene and nothing fancy here, just a plane and anything else so first we'll be creating a very quick particle system yeah. so for that select a plane and go to particle tab and hit the plus button and that will create a basic particle system for us so just to give initial speed what we want to do is we'll go to the velocity and bump up the normal amount to 10 and play it again now we'll see we have greater initial speed and let's decrease the number to 500 and increase the lifetime to 100 it means the each particle will stay for 100 frames and then it will disappear and we'll need an object for for particles because cycles will not edit the hello particles it needs an object so let's create a UV sphere real quick and select the plane and in render tab select the object and choose the sphere and play it again and you'll see we're actually we're getting spheres but they're pretty small so go to the physics tab and increase the size to 2 which is fair enough and one thing we need to cache the particle system so that when we have to scrub the timeline back and forth the particles won't screw up like they are doing it right now so better to cache the particles so just go to the cache frame enter any name set the cache step to 1 since it's not actually a heavy cache so we can keep the cache step to it. if it's a heavy simulation better not to keep it so just hit bake and real quickly it's Baking, it bake the simulation so you can scrub the time and time and it's not screwing up. So, pretty cool. And another thing, so let's change this view to the node editor, which is actually an editor now. And select the sphere and just assign any material here. And make sure in cycles in the tab here and choose the viewport shading to render. And you will see everything is just right. So just change the color to the red so you can see the particles. And as you can see now, whatever the color the sphere has, actually all the particles are following. But what if we want different color? Of, like for first few frames, we have red color and then green and then so on. You got it or the particle which are red will turn green or yellow and then say blue after all the time so this is what we have to do it with the particle info node and you can see the particle info node here in the input panel so press shift a the input and the last option will be the particle info currently there are Three options are exposed to index, age, and left hand. So, what is index? So, index is a particle ID. So, currently we have 500 particles. So, the last particles will have the index ID of 500, and the first one will have respectively H. H is a per particle H. So, the first particle will have an age of 20 at the frame 20. The lifetime is the total lifetime we have set here, which is 100. So, let's select the sphere. So, 
with these three parameters we have to perform some cool stuff now so let's start with the index first so the first thing what we need is a mix shader so shift a shader and mix shader which will help us to distinguish between the two colors so just drag in between and it will connect it automatically and just choose another color you want to just press uh, select the diffuse node and press shift D and it will duplicate and just change the color to green and just plug that in into the other shader but currently it is taking an average of these two colors so actually it's not identifying the colors based on the life or the index because it needs a factor to tell them which particles will have the red colors and which will have the green color so currently you may just select the index or index input and put it into the mix shader but doing this will probably crash your pointer so this is not actually a correct way so you need a math node so with a converter and have math and put the index node into the first value and set the function to greater than and set the greater than value so let's say 50 so let's add let's connect the value to the factor and see what happens right so currently what happens is the particles which were having index id less than 50 are uh, getting the red color and whatever the, the greater than 50 are the green for instance you can scroll down the time run. it will not update in the viewport but you can see the color update so first few frames till the particle count is 50 it's all red and then it's all green till the end so this is how you work with the index so if you want uh, a reverse result so, so you can simply check that as uh, less than so the different the result will be the opposite so first you will get the green and then red or you can check the pole between these two let's keep it together then and what if you have and what if you want multiple colors like red green blue yellow so it's simple actually nothing too complicated so just take another mix shader and place it in between here take another diffuse gloss here anything like you have all the so let's take a velvet chair now so we'll have blue velvet velvet and plug that into the second port still this mix shader needs a factor and the factor will be different than this 50 so let's duplicate this node shift d take the index and plug it into the first port and change the value to 100 now the particle id is above 100 you'll get the view Light. shader let's check that out now blue and green and so on since it's not updating in this loop what you can always do is go to the solid draw now let's just go to the previous frame so 70 and check the Render version, so you have all three. So the first they were red, after 50 they became green, and after 100 they are blue, and so on. Just you can add multiple as you want. So this is how the basic working with the particle info now. So it's just a basic working of this particle, and nothing too fun. So next part will be 
to get the same particle changing its color over the time because currently the red particles will tie red the green will tie red green and the blue one will tie when they are blue but what if the particle should pawn red in the middle becomes green and at the time of death it should become blue so in order to so in order to do that we'll need to do some other trick that is to work with the age and the lifetime and we'll see how can we work with the age and the lifetime in the next video thank you